Hi everyone, it is the first day of Wilsathon and I am so excited to get reading. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will leave my announcement video linked down below in the description and in the cards, but if you're watching this now, you have missed the party, but don't worry, you can still join in in the spirit of Wilsathon. Wilsathon is just a week where we are celebrating our love for Jacqueline Wilson and her books. Jacqueline Wilson was a huge part of my childhood. I devoured so many of her books, but I've not reread any of them since I was a kid. So it is time to celebrate. Jacqueline Wilson, an icon, the reason I'm a socialist. First order of business is to make myself a cup of tea, and then I need to figure out my TBR. I do have some Jacqueline Wilson books on my shelf that I would like to reread. I have got a couple of audiobooks out from the library, but I think what I'm gonna do with my audiobooks is I'm gonna try to listen to them while I'm working during the week because a lot of them will be quite short and quick to get through. I also have to do quite a bit of filming this weekend, so that is why I need tea to fuel me. This may seem so silly, but does anyone else do it where there are certain clothes that you like to film in? So I have changed into this jumper just to film some videos, but I'm going to change back into the jumper I was wearing previously when I finished filming. So I filmed a couple of videos and I was having one of those filming days where just none of the sentences were coming out and I was getting really frustrated with myself. And at the end of filming, I dropped my iPhone and of course I panicked that my iPhone screen had smashed, checked it, it was fine but I dropped it like on a mug. And now my favorite mug, my Spice Girls mug is chipped and I'm very hormonal. I'm just gonna level with you guys. And I feel like I'm gonna cry. I really feel like I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and it's in too many little shards for me to like super glue it back together. Maybe I can paint it. I feel like that's a good solution is I can paint it, but I just, I can't. <laughs> Aoife and Charlotte are about to do some reading sprints over on Aoife's channel, so I'm gonna participate in those and and cheer myself up. So let's go pick a book to read for those. Okay, so these are my Jacqueline Wilson books. I know I'm gonna read Love Lessons at some point, but I'm not ready right now. <laughs> should I go for The Illustrated Mom? I think I should. Let's go big or go home, because that is one of the ones where I was like, I'm dying to reread this and see how much I remember and see how much it would have traumatized me as a child. <laughs> right, let's go. Oh, we have absolutely been watching. We want to hear what you're reading for this reading sprint. Tell us what you're reading. Morning. So, I read about a hundred pages of The Illustrated Mom yesterday, and it is such a different reading experience reading it as a grown up reader because I am so angry at Marigold, who's the mother. And I do know there are mental health reasons for her behaving the way she is, and Shar has told me that this has really fantastic bipolar representation in it. And I know something Shar has spoken about before how it is important to acknowledge that sometimes it can be difficult to have a relationship, whether it's familial or otherwise, with someone with bipolar. And it's important that you acknowledge those difficulties. I just so desperately want Marigold to get the help that she needs, because when she's not, I am just so angry with her. Like, I am now closer to Marigold, the mother's age. She's 33. I am closer to her age than I am the kid's age. And I'm just so angry with her. As per usual with the Sunday morning, there are some cozy reading sprints going on. So I'm gonna join in with those. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can finish the Illustrated Mum during those sprints. So let's see how I get on. Hello. <laughs> Hello. As you can tell, um, these reading sprints will be kind of Jackie Wilson themed, sort of. Uh, me and Karis have come in as like the unofficial cheerleaders for Wars of Fun, uh, which we're hosting at the minute. I had completely forgotten who Mickey was and that Mickey was a thing. And I think it's really interesting what stays with you from your childhood books and what doesn't. And also how that differs between person to person. 
Like from discussing Jacqueline Wilson books this week, there are certain scenes that have really stayed with some people that other people have completely forgotten and like vice versa as well. And reading The Illustrated Mom is, as I said, a completely different reading experience, reading it as a grown up, not just because of my anger towards Marigold, the mother, but I absolutely love Star. She is the older sister and I can just imagine not liking her when I read this as a kid. But reading this now, I think she's great. And I really want to know what went down between her and the boy that she was like, interested in because she completely like 180s on him and pushes him to the side. And I thought that was just so badass. Also, this book has given me the most intense craving for McDonald's. Why was that a thing when you were a teenager that like, the height of excitement was going to McDonald's and everything, like every like social occasion, like before we started drinking, everything was centered around going to McDonald's. It is now Monday morning again. The days start coming and they don't stop coming. I'm just about to start work for the week. It is going to be a very busy morning. I've got a couple of calls that I'll be going on. But while I am working away, I am going to be listening to Bad Girls. I don't remember loads about this one. I think it's about a girl who is bullied and she becomes friends with a girl who is a little bit older and they do some shoplifting, I think. That's what I remember. So I'm gonna get some work done and listen to that one. It is now lunchtime. I didn't get to listen to too much of Bad Girls. Actually, I got to listen to like the bulk of it. But I've got about an hour left to listen to and I'm enjoying it. Our main character in this book, her parents are very overprotective of her and tend to baby her quite a lot, particularly her mother. And I think as a child reader, that is something that I would have really felt a lot of sympathy with the kid for. Whereas an adult reader, I now have the context of understanding that the mother is a little bit older, that she struggled to have kids for a long time. So she's very protective of the kid for that reason, because she is so precious. And I don't think that's something that I would have had the kind of empathy to understand as a child. So what do I read on my lunch break? I have finished work now. I read just over a hundred pages of My Sister Jodie when I was on my lunch break and I'm very keen to plow through the rest of it this evening. Join in all of the conversations that are happening around the book and also I know some people have started reading Love Lessons now which is the one I mentioned I was very keen to read to see what my thoughts were on it. So I would really like to finish My Sister Jodie so I can move on to the next one. I did also finish Bad Girls. I finished listening to that while I was working and I don't have any particularly strong feelings on this one. Maybe that's why it was one that I didn't really remember much about. Maybe it didn't leave a huge impact on me even when I read it as a kid. But what I am realizing with revisiting Jacqueline Wilson's books is obviously there are the books like the Tracy Beaker books that are very focused on the foster care system but it seems to be something that she weaves into a lot of her books quite often. So foster care and the foster system does feature in The Illustrated Mom and it does feature in Bad Girls as well. So she's really just normalized that experience, which I think is so important. Anyway, time to go do some more reading. So it is now the next day and I did not read any more of my sister Jodie because instead, instead I FaceTimed my friend and we built this together and I must say it was a team effort. But today has been a little bit odd because I have been working, but the electricity has been cut off. We did know the electricity was going to be cut off. So I had like planned, I had my laptop charged up, I was going to use the hotspot of my work phone. I'm now finished work for the day, but my laptop is about to die. My phone is about to die, <laughs> which to be fair is the perfect excuse for me to now crack on with my reading. But I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film because my phone's about to die. <laughs> Honestly, for a vlog that is meant to have like nostalgic childhood vibes, I'm dealing with so many boring grown up things. <laughs> Well, I finished my sister Jodie and my heart. <laughs> I had remembered the ending correctly and it was just as abrupt 
as I remembered it being, but I still didn't feel emotionally prepared. I remember reading it as a kid and that ending was such a plot twist, but now reading it, I don't know if it's reading it as a grown up or reading it knowing what the ending is, there is so much foreshadowing, like so much. <laughs> it is now Wednesday, another day of work ahead of me. I do want to listen to Lily Alone, which ticks off the challenge of reading a book that you've never read before. And I haven't really been focused on fulfilling our bingo board. I've kind of just been reading by whim. But I've definitely read a book for older readers. I've read a book for younger readers. I've reread a book. The childhood snack that I have been enjoying is Wagon Wheels. I am really tired today, so I'm gonna make myself a coffee. I don't drink coffee every day. It is reserved from when I'm feeling quite drowsy. <laughs> So I can enjoy one of my childhood snacks while I have that. I haven't watched the My Mum Tracy Beaker show yet, so I may watch an episode of that this evening and then I will be moving on to reading Love Lessons. Some of the girls have already been rereading this one and uh, I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it, <laughs> but we shall see. For a love potion, a little sweet and spice. Throw it all in a cauldron, mix it up real nice. Fire in my eyes, stir counterclockwise. I dream of you all night. We are on the first page and already Jacqueline Wilson's obsession with McDonald's. One of the scenes that I really remember from this book, and it's actually really brief in the book, I think I remember it being much longer, is when the main character talks about buying her own bra and knickers. I hate the word knickers. <laughs> buying her own underwear and feeling like she can't put it in the wash because then like her mother would know. I remember what that feeling is like. To be honest, even now I have moved back in with my mother because of COVID reasons. And I do feel a little bit bashful when I hang my pants on the clothes horse and, and she can see them and I'm like, oh, my mom's gonna think I'm a hoe. <laughs> I mean, she knows I'm not, so I don't leave the house. <laughs> so I finished reading Love Lessons last night and I have some thoughts and I don't fully know what they are yet. <laughs> By the way, I am in a new office setup. I will be doing a full video that is showing you how I've set up my home office, but I have spent the past few evenings doing a lot of DIY, <laughs> which isn't something that comes particularly naturally to me. I did consider like vlogging, putting the furniture together, but I know from experience that adding the stress of setting up a camera and making sure the camera angles are right does not help a flat pack situation. So love lessons. If you don't know, Love Lessons is about a teenage girl, she's 14 years old, who has a very difficult home life. Her father is abusive. He can be physically violent and he's also very aggressive what, what he says to his wife and his two, two daughters. He really talks down to them, he says really horrible things to them. He is super controlling and the two daughters have been homeschooled until the dad becomes unwell and he has to spend some time in hospital. So their mother makes the decision to send the two girls to school. The younger sister settles in pretty well and makes some friends however the older sister the 14 year old that we're seeing from she really struggles to fit in but she does strike up a bond with her art teacher and gradually we come to realize that that bond is very inappropriate i'm trying to remember how i felt about this book when i first read it let me look it up because i think i read this book when it first came out it came out in 2005 so i would have been nine years old when i was reading this and i think my reaction was that i found the storyline exciting but i also did know Know that it wasn't right that this teacher felt the way he did about a 14 year old. I think one of the things that is really great about Jacqueline Wilson's books is that they feel very real. They don't feel sugarcoated. They feel as if she's presenting the reality of the difficulties of being a young person, going through very difficult experiences. And she shows the reality of those difficulties. I feel uncomfortable with the ending of this book and what happens to Prudence, the 14 year old, but you 
could have an argument that that is what happens. Does it send a particularly good message to other young girls who could be reading this book and in that position that if they speak out about something like that happening, they will be the ones to face the consequences, not the teacher? And that concerns me. I do wonder if when this is reprinted nowadays, is there any kind of note from the author or any kind of list of resources? Although you could probably make an argument for most of Jacqueline Wilson's books maybe benefiting from an author note or a list of resources for organisations you can speak to if you need help. I do think in the more recent reprints of Judy Bloom's books they have come with a note about contextualising the story. It's an interesting thing to think about and I think now reading Love Lessons as a grown-up reader I was far more aware of what an unreliable narrator Prue is because it seems very obvious to me that there is stuff that she's left out. There is blanks being left for you to fill in. Looking at our Wilsathon challenges there are still a couple of things that I haven't ticked off so I haven't listened to the Lily Alone audiobook yet and I haven't done a doodle based on a Jacqueline Wilson book and I haven't watched an adaptation yet either. Okay right. <laughs> the plan is I'm just on my lunch break now so I'm gonna get some food and then after lunch I'm gonna whack the audiobook on and then straight away after work we are watching my mum Tracy Beaker. That is my plan. Belinda presents this unabridged recording of Lily Alone, written and read by Jacqueline Wilson. finished listening to Lily alone and it was really interesting to read a Jacqueline Wilson book now for the first time as a grown-up. This one is about a little girl named Lily. I think she's around 11 years old and her three younger siblings. Their mother had them when she was very young. From the very beginning of the book we can see that she's very neglectful and irresponsible and we really see the height of this when she meets a lad down the pub and then they decide to go on holiday together and the kids end up being left to fend for themselves. It's really interesting to see that experience through Lily's eyes because she's trying to be like the responsible grown-up but she's only 11 years old. She's trying to take care of her younger siblings and keep it a secret that their mother has essentially abandoned them. And you see the really horrible things that they end up doing to kind of survive without a parent. All of the other books that I've read this week have been rereads, so I kind of knew where they were going and it was just kind of the finer details that I had forgotten. And I really enjoyed reading a book for the first time and seeing that I still got so much out of that story and seeing that experience and seeing the trials and tribulations that these kids go through and the difficult things that they overcome. And the plot still left me unsure of where it was going to go and I was still rushing towards the end. I'm going to watch an episode of my mum Tracy Beaker now and I am so excited particularly to see Justine Littlewood. Do you know my mum Tracy Beaker? Morning! And welcome to Friday. I have finished work for the week. While I do have an entire evening and an entire day left with Wilsathon, I am going to end the vlog here because I don't think I'm going to read anything new. I don't really feel like having a camera in my face this weekend. I know booktube and especially reading vlogs can be such an amazing way for people to experience escapism at the moment and also feel like they're hanging out with a friend while we're not able to see each other and I'm so glad that I'm part of this community not only as a creator but as a viewer and I'm able to join in on that experience but I do think it's kind of important to acknowledge with reading vlogs that I like everyone else I think at the moment I'm having a bit of a rubbish time. My mental health is very fragile and I'm doing all of the things I can to take care of it but I think this weekend I really need to take some time just for myself to read for the joy of reading and not be reading for videos or vlogs. That's not to say I haven't had the best time this week when it comes to rereading, I really have, but I do just think it's important to acknowledge that a lot of us are having a rubbish time at the moment. If you are feeling in any way similar to me, which is a lot of 
frustration with the world, um, you're not alone. The final Will Sutton thing that I'm going to do is finish up watching my mom Tracy Beaker because that was the kind of, it was just escapism TV, you know? It feels kind of pointless to complain about pacing issues in a children's TV show. I think there were pacing issues, but overall I am really enjoying it. Oh, and I promise I will do a full video on the TBR card. Right now, not all of the books fit on the TBR cart, so we might wait until it's in a bit of a better condition. I hope that you have had an amazing Wilsathon if you participated. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you were reading over the week, or if you didn't manage to participate, let me know which Jacqueline Wilson book you would be the most intrigued to reread one day. Or are there any other authors from your childhoods that you would love to revisit? I hope you guys are taking care of yourself and I will talk to you in my next video.